In this video, we're going to go through seven must-know tactics to ace your selective school or scholarship test. Let's start with the first one, abstract reasoning. Instantly, when someone looks at this, they think, which is the odd one out? Well, B, C, and D have corners, right? And so they'd automatically say, A, A is the odd one out. But it's actually not. Why is that? Well, because B, C, and D have corners, but they don't have the same number of corners. So D has four corners, C has cor sorry, C has four corners, and B has only three corners. If you're going to say that these are the same, they should all have four corners, okay? Or should all have three corners. So that's why B, C, and D aren't actually the same. What you need to do is find out what rule binds all three together. Okay, so one of these rules is the angle. So we know that a circle has 360 degrees as an angle. And the same with C and D. And we know that a triangle has just 180 degrees. As an angle. So this is a rule where you can say, okay, we've got a rule now that means A, C, and D are the same. And therefore, the figure that is the odd one out would be B. So the key strategy to take away here is to make sure that the rule or whatever binds a group together applies and is consistent. Don't just look visually, make sure you have a real reason to make your selection. This creative writing piece is, you know, of a maze. And this is, uh, like, I'm going to start again. So usually when students see this sort of question, this is a creative writing piece and they will write a story, okay? It doesn't need to be a complex story, but it needs to be a story that's related to the prompt, okay? So writing about any old maze is not good enough, say a garden maze or um or getting lost in you know, a wooden maze. That's not going to cut it because when you have a prompt like this, you need to relate to the quote. So someone is trapped, they need to get out and also the visual element. So you've got here white walls, you know, a maze that seems to go on forever and one in which someone needs to get out, okay? So what are the key strategies to take from this so that you can do well in creative writing? The key strategy you should remember for creative writing is that all three parts must work well together. This means you need to relate to the prompt visually and for any text prompts, make sure your structure is in order and make sure that you have a really good balance between showing and telling sentences. This is a numerical reasoning question and one of the common things that students will do is this. So first of all, they'll look at um, the pattern. So from P to R and then from R to T. What's that? So from P to R, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. So that's two units going up. Okay, so I'm going to write that there. So they assume two units going up here and then from R to T, is two units as well, so R, S, T. So the letter here should be what? T, U, B. That's what should be there. So they'll assume that, okay, I've already done this. I've got two, two, and I've got the answer here. So this should be easy. So 17 plus two is 19. That's the answer. Is that really the answer? No, it's not the answer. The thing is that with uh, reasoning, so especially numerical reasoning, there are rules that might differ for different types of things. So you might have a rule for a column, you might have a rule for a row, and then you might have rules for letters and numbers. So it's important that you don't just jump into saying, okay, I'm going to find that one rule and here it is and I'm just going to use that to find this one. You need to find out if there's a separate rule that applies. So from 13 to 17, 
What's that? So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Well, that's four. And therefore, from 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. The place in here should be, the number in here should be 21. And that's the answer. Okay, and you can see here from A to C, that's two. A, B, C. And from 21 to 25, that's four. So it looks like the numbers are going down the row, sorry, down the column by four, and the letters are going down by two. Okay? So it's important that we evaluate not just one column, but rather each individual column where you have different types of characters. So you've got letters and you've got numbers. Okay, so what number should replace the asterisk? It should be 21. So the key strategy for numerical reasoning is always check for separate rules for different types of letters or numbers, or even rows or columns. One of the biggest um, errors I see students make when they get a argumentative prompt is that they don't write a response to the question. Okay, they come with some sort of preconceived idea of what the question should be, but they don't see what the question is in front of them. I know it sounds something that this sounds like something that no one would do, but it's actually really common. Okay, so the question here is whether or not graffiti is art, okay? And one of the common things people will do will be to write a response that says, graffiti is bad because this, or graffiti is not bad because dot, dot, dot. The thing is, these two things, graffiti is bad and graffiti is not bad, is not the same question as whether or not graffiti is art, okay? When students go down this path of somehow coming up with their own question and making a response to something else that's totally separate, marks, easy marks can be lost, okay? So what should the students write about? Well, they should write exactly what the question is asking you. Is it art? So what qualifies as art? Okay, first you need to have a stance. Do you believe that graffiti is art? This is the question that's been asked. Yes or no? And then argue your point. Just say, you say yes. How then? Or why do you think graffiti is art? Well, because art is an expression. And graffiti is an expression of that. Um, art uses a medium. And the medium for graffiti is the public space, which is a wall and um, generally spray paint. Okay, so that's the key takeaway. And I know it's such a simple one, but it's one that so many students make. They write to the wrong question. Graffiti is bad is not the same question as graffiti is art. The key takeaway or key strategy for argumentative writing is to have a stance and provide two reasons why you support your stance and develop them in detail. Make sure you also interpret the question correctly. To answer this reading comprehension question well, students need to know the difference between literal and figurative. Okay, If students just do an exercise where they think reading comprehension is where you find and match words, so for example, the word spilled milk and spills milk and no other option has the word spilled milk, they will choose A, okay? It's a very quick process, but A is not the correct answer. Instead, you should be aware that there are two types of meaning. So you've got your literal meaning, which means exactly what is being said, and then you've got your figurative meaning as well. So how do you answer this question then? So students who do this correctly, they'll know the difference between the meaning, the deeper meaning and literal. So you can see here that this is about a deeper meaning. So it's not just about milk and it's expensive to get more. Spilled milk talks about a mistake. Okay, so this has a mistake, this has mistake and mistake. 
and mistakes again. But what's don't cry mean? Well, don't cry means don't get upset. Don't be sad about a mistake. Okay, so do not make a mistake get worse. No, do not be upset about making a mistake since you cannot change that now. That seems about right. The mistakes we make will never be changed. Mm, not really. Try to fix your mistakes. Again, not really. The key here is don't cry. Don't be upset. Okay, so the answer to this question would be C. Key strategy for reading comprehension? Know the difference between figurative and literal. Reading comprehension is not purely a find and match exercise. To answer this maths question, we need to break up the components. So what students generally do when they're in an exam and they're really pressured for time is they think, oh, maths, all I need to do is do some sort of quick calculation and there's my answer. But that's not the case. So if you were to follow what many students do, they'll think, okay, I don't understand this question. Um, it says how full the wooden box um, weighs six kilos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say six times 12. Sorry, six times two because it's half. And then they'll come up with something like 12 and they, they'll say, oh, fantastic. There is a 12 here, so I'm gonna get that answer and then I'll move on. Unfortunately, this isn't the correct answer. To answer the maths questions really well, you need to break down the components. So let's see what these components are. So let's see one component. You've got a wooden box. That's one thing, right? And it's filled with apples. So when it's filled, it weighs 10 kilos, right? But then when it's half full, so at this stage, you have a box as well. The box and it's half full, so half the apples. So it weighs six kilos. So what does that mean? So 10 kilos, six kilos, when you take away 10 and six, sorry, six from 10, that's four kilos, right? So you've got four kilos and the difference between the 10 and the six is pretty much the half of the apples that have been taken away. To get how many, um, so how many kilos the total of apples weighs when the box is filled, we then have to do this. 4 times 2, which is 8, okay? So it's 8 kilograms. But that is that the question being asked? Should we go and then circle this? No. Why? Because it asks us the wooden box, okay? How much does the wooden box weigh? In this case, when you've got 10 kilos, being the wooden box and the full apples. Uh, we know the full apples is eight kilograms. The wooden box should be the difference. So 10 kilograms, take away eight kilograms is two kilograms. Key strategy for mathematics, isolate out the different parts of your question so that you can answer them well. To answer this verbal reasoning question, we first need to understand that patterns can skip they don't need to apply from one to the next okay and again you need to make sure that you find a rule that holds true so for this one here one of the key things students would do would go b q d well i can't find a i can't find some sort of match there but how about s t u well there you go there's an s and there's one letter there and sh it should be t that's the answer. Unfortunately, when you go around this way, T is the answer because there's no rule then that holds true. There must always be an underlying pattern, okay? And it's your job to find that pattern. So what could that pattern be? Well, the thing is, they don't need to be in an order. So it doesn't need to go from BB to Q to Q to DD. It can skip. So from BB to DD and then from D, D, D to something here and then from something there to H, 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 H. So it looks like after the B, B, after two, then they add three. So down here, there should be four characters, right? So it could be 
option B or option C. But then now we need to see how how much um, the letters are moving from each from one to the other. So from B to D, that's A, B, C, D. So that's two. So from D, add two up to here is F. So the answer should be F, 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 F. And this is true because from F, 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 going two up is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay? And so that's why B is the correct answer in this case. So try to find what pattern exists and then once you're confident with that pattern, you'll be more confident with the solution that you get. So what's the key strategy for verbal reasoning? That patterns can skip. They do not need to apply from one to the next. They can apply to each second one.